Herzlich willkommen, Chad Stahelski und Keanu Reeves. Willkommen zu Berlin. Willkommen, Chad und Keanu, zu uh, Berlin. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Thank you very much for bringing this great movie to, uh, to Germany. Um, I have a, the first question basically is, springs to mind. This must be um, the ultimate compliment and satisfaction to know that you got to do part two because the fans love number one so much. What does that mean to you and especially how much pressure did that put on you to create a unique story for the second one? Yeah, well, I mean, we wouldn't be here without uh, the affection that uh, the first John Wick achieved and uh, was given. So it's, uh, it's I, I love the role, I love making the film, and to have the opportunity to play it again and to work with Chad uh, was really a great gift. Chad? No, it was, um, it's a little bit shocking afterwards. We made the, we made the first movie with the intent of doing a, a somewhat artsy genre film an action film that kind of was a bit of a throwback to some of the 70s stuff that Keanu, myself, and my partner really liked. And then to have the response that we did was, was very, very flattering. And when they asked us to do a second one, it was, um, uh, I thought it was a great opportunity. Keanu wanted to do it. It was just a matter of finding a story and a, a, a way to expand the world that we found very interesting. And it was, uh, again, um, quite the experience to go back with, with a cast member that, that puts up with so much abuse. Um, so we could take it to a different level. So thank you, Keanu. <laughs> thank you, Chad. Chad and Keanu, um, I think this is sort of like the fairy tale world of assassins. Uh, it's a very amazing, colorful, fictitious world. And what I like about the second one, I mean, the action is great, but I like the uh, comedic elements even more, especially, for example, the, the bar sequence with Carmen. Peter Stormer in the beginning, or the, the whole sequence when you get your gear in, uh, yeah. in Italy. <laughs> yeah. um, how important was it for you guys to add these moments to the movie to make John Wick even more, you know, the character fun. That he is? Yeah, exactly. Fun. Very fun, yeah. I think when you come down to what we want to do with the sequel, which was really about world expansion and how to make the action a little bit uh, bigger, but at the same time interesting and go a different route. Um, It was about action design and how we pace. You can go ahead and add a little bit more um, uh, brutality, I guess, to the action if you can let the audience off the hook a little bit. So we wanted to kind of, one, being able to create a rhythm of, of build you up, this is very cool, this is very action-y, and then let you down with a little bit of humor, and at the same time let the audience know that you know, we're not taking ourselves too seriously. Tell us a little bit more, Keanu, about the sequence with Common. You basically beat the shit out of each other, and then you go yeah. and have a drink, and then yeah. what was that like? Um, I, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, <clears throat> in John Wick, there's the underworld, and the underworld has its own rules and codes and ethics, and uh, one of them is that there'll be no business uh, you know, done on continental grounds, which is this hotel kind of world where it's a kind of safe spot for assassins and uh, Common who plays Cassian who's a kind of a peer assassin uh, he and I fight and then we crash into the continental and then uh, Franco Nero says gentlemen go have a drink at the bar and we do and so it's kind of cool and fun just to you know be trying to kill each other and then go have a drink at the bar it's I don't know. It was really a fun scene to do. Um, yeah. Thank you. Questions from the floor. Gentlemen right here in the first row. Mit einem Mikrofon, das da kommt. Hi, I'm Pavel from RTL West. Don't wonder why I'm hanging here with the um, uh, iPhone because uh, it's streaming live on the internet. So, Hello, uh, internet! <laughs> so nice greetings from all your German fans, Ken Reeves, Germany and so on. And yes. uh, Patrick Pritch and uh, Danny Müller is asking, um, how hard were all these fighting scenes for you? And how much cuts and boozers did you get, honestly? Uh, um, honestly, I didn't get too many cuts and bruises. No, I didn't get too many cuts. Um, and... Uh, You know, the action for John Wick is, is really uh, uh, fun and demanding. Uh, Chad 
really wants to you know have longer takes and really bring the audience to the action and and for me it's really fun to try to do as much as I possibly can um, and so it was more judo more, more jujitsu the gun work um, and I really feel like a, a responsibility because this gentleman has a very um, there's no limit to his imagination. So in a, in a way, I become the limit. Like, it's only as good as I can get, um, which I, uh, I appreciate that offer, that gift. Um, but it is, uh, and, and challenge, uh, but it's, it's what makes it worthwhile. Thank you. Oh, okay. Question right here from the gentleman and then over here. Hi, Keanu. Hi, Chad. Um, first of all, thanks for this fantastic action masterpiece. Um, Keanu. <laughs> action masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it was impressive. Really impressive. Um, <coughs> Keanu, how is it being back as John Wick? And what was the most challenging action sequences? And physically demanding stunt for you while shooting John Wick chapter two? Um, first of all, thank you. And uh, um, I don't know, I love playing the role. I think uh, I love his will, I like his passion, I love his grief. I like that uh, he, you know, he gets knocked down, but he keeps going, gets back up. Um, I, I would say the most challenging action sequence was the fight with Common. Uh, he and I have a, a long action sequence. Well, we have two fights, uh, but and two gun fights. <laughs> um, but the one that we fight outside the room was very technical. <coughs> excuse me, and demanded a lot of cooperation. So that had the most uh, training in it. Uh, <coughs> in terms of getting hurt or anything like that, um, no, nah, everybody's okay. Everybody lived. No actors were hurt in the making of this film. Yeah. Much. The gentleman right here, and then the lady over there. Um, hello. Uh, Thorsten Bretzinger for Alex Radio, 60 Minutes, and uh, Friedrich uh, Potsdam. Um, question for both, actually, Mr. Stahelski and Mr. Reeves. Um, to this genre, there's always uh, a little bit the discussion attached. Um, does it trigger violence in the real world? <coughs> Um, what is your opinion about it? I, I would say with John Wick, I mean, I no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun film, and it's you know, it's got such a heightened sense of real reality, and um, I don't know. I mean, I think if you, you know, I, I would just say if you're a healthy human being, no. It's in the interpretation, and uh, that's a very good point, and we're very aware of that you know coming from the back the action background that we both do we went out purposely on the first John Wick to try and keep create a mythological world that's why you see the colors the the extreme wardrobe the extreme language we just want to make sure everyone knows that it is more or less a fantasy and how we treat it and that that goes back to what we were talking about earlier with humor you know we want it to be a fun ride the action ride that's why we keep hitting John Wick with cars. He seems to have a problem with cars. <laughs> He's and very windows, good with, Chad, and windows, through, through windows, and and stairs. He and seems stairs, to have a, a weakness for. Stairs. So you you try to put the flaws in the character, to let people know that yeah, look, we're having fun. We're trying to create a hero. Yes, he does do things with the gun. He does have an affinity for the headshot for sure. Um, again, we try to stay away from grounding it too much to give it that emotional content of actual violence, you know, we prefer to think of it more as the video game line. So it's a little bit more fun, adventure, wish fulfillment kind of thing. So. In the <coughs> third row. Hello, Raquel Quarford from TV Berlin. I have a question to Keanu or to you, Chad. Um, who came up with the idea to reunite you with the Matrix, uh, Lawrence Fishburne? Ooh. Uh, I think that's... Chad. Uh, I think it was Lawrence. <laughs> I think that was Lawrence. It was Lawrence. Yeah. La Lawrence came to, Ke I think Keanu and Lawrence bumped into each other. And uh, I'll let Keanu tell that story, but yeah, I, I definitely capitalized on it. Yeah, Ch uh, Lawrence and I are friends. We were hanging out. He said he really liked the first one. I said, really? He said, yeah. And I said, well, do you want to do it? He went, well, let me read a script. I said, hey, Chad, <clears throat> Lawrence wants to read a script. Chad sent Lawrence a script, and Lawrence said, uh, yes. 
And uh, he plays the Bowery King, which is another underworld element, um, opening up the world, and uh, he's magnificent. Yeah, it was quite uh, it, uh, shocking. We had really written the part with him in mind after spending 10 years together on the Matrix trilogy, uh, but we had never hoped to get him, and then Keanu would come into the office one day saying Lawrence was interested, and it literally took five minutes to make up our minds, go, yeah, we got to get him. So that was a, that was a good thing. Pat, let's talk about the way that he shot the movie, because if you look at action movies nowadays, there are a lot of cuts mm -hmm. to make it faster. Um, you basically didn't do any cuts. It looks like they well, they're they're crazy. crazy. Yeah, There's it was some cuts. Yeah, 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 but I mean, it looks like yeah. you had no. some long sequences oh, that you sure. shot. Sure. Um, how did you go about preparing that, and what did that mean um, for you, Keanu, as the main character? Mm. Yeah, no, just process-wise, it's... Uh, it is a, you know, we just believe it's kind of like pool. You got to call your shot. <laughs> um, most modern day action films are cut or edited in a very specific way or in a very uh, fast or choppy way. And it's come to mean, again, there are some directors and some editors out there that do it as an aesthetic. Um, it's a style. And then there's others that do it because uh, they're trying to hide something <laughs> or they didn't prepare properly. And we found that a lot as action directors. Um, it's mostly you're trying to hide the stunt double, you're trying to hide the lights, you're trying to hide the set, you're trying to hide the wires, you're trying to hide the imperfections of performance, you're trying to hide that you didn't have enough prep time or, or you know, uh, the cameraman's inability to, to capture the action. So if you really go back, we decided, well, we're just going to prep. Um, it all comes down through the concept of, like Keanu was saying earlier, about we have a big imagination, but it does come down to John Wick. So rather than have a scene where you have two guys in suits sitting in a room going, John Wick was a badass, he did this, he did, we just decided, well, we're not going to do that, we're just going to show you. In order to show you, we have to have the audience see Keanu Reeves as John Wick performing what any of us would consider impressive. And that means longer takes, bigger moves, driving a car, falling down stairs, going up. So we had to involve the audience into the character's participation. In order to do that, you have to be on board with your cinematographer, so from the very beginning, we told Dan Lauston, Kevin Cavanaugh, our production designer, our cameramen were at the rehearsals, and you start four months out going, we're going to do longer takes, we're going to see the world, we want the audience to be transported into the world of John Wick, whether it's catacombs, a rock concert, or, or the streets of New York. And you start with your crew, and you go, okay, this is the shot, this is what we're going to do. And when your cinematographer gets that, he works to either put the lights into shot, so you can see wider, or he builds them into the set. The cameramen are at the rehearsals, the wardrobe guys at the rehearsals, the prop masters are at the rehearsals. So by the time we actually get to set, we're not wasting our time going, oh my God, how are we going to do this? We're more about, well, let's do more takes. Let's find out a more creative way to do it. The time is spent creatively and not logistically. But that starts literally as soon as we began prep and start location scouting. And what that means is the stunt teams have to take Keanu and the other cast members and work not only on the physical skills, but their performance skills, their memory skills, and rehearse that not just with each other, but the stunt teams, the cameramen, lighting guys, and just work all as a, as a really uh, a big live performance, really, which is fun, but a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> Sounds like it. What um, a lot yeah. of work for you as well. Uh, yeah, but when we're saying work, like it's work. It's, fun. it's, yeah, I mean, it's work, but it's also, you know, I'm, I'm doing fake fights and yeah, I'm, but it's, uh, um, yeah, it takes a lot of commitment and to take, but the longer takes, it's, uh, um, yeah, you just, it's, uh, it's a little more demanding and you just have to, I mean, it's a longer dance and, uh, um, yeah, you just try not to suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just try and just do it. And good. you didn't. Yeah, but I appreciate that. That's a good that. thing. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Question from the lady over there, and then... Hi, my name is Christina from German Radio. Uh, I heard that you are going to make a film with a producer from Berlin. When are you going to shoot in Germany, a whole film, or in Berlin? Yeah, that would be really great. Um, it's not going to be on that film, but... Because uh, uh, it's called Siberia, and uh, not Berlin. But, uh, but no, I would, uh, I would love to work here. I mean, Chad's had the chance to work here, I think, a few times, right? A couple times, yeah. Yeah, a couple fantastic, times. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, am I speaking German? Um, no, I'm speaking some Russian and some, uh, some American English. But, uh, yeah, 
Um, no, it would be really. I got to work in uh, Munich once in a Bavaria film plots, but uh, never, no, never here in Berlin. Question from the lady. Hi, this is for the German press agency. Uh, I understand you're Canadian. What's your current political situation? Politics. Exactly. Let's try and stick to the movie. Uh, I think that'll be the no, best okay. thing. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a cr crazy time out there. Um, I'm. What would John Wick say? <laughs> Send them all to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't. I, he probably wouldn't say much. But uh, um, what do we say? We can jump to the next question. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't want to, I mean, a uh, uh, young lady asked it for a reason, sure. I guess. And, uh, I don't know if she saw the movie or not, but um, yeah, I mean, America has a new president and, and getting their administration together and uh, some decisions have uh, been uh, made and things, actions being done that uh, a lot of people don't agree with and probably aren't quite humanly correct. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a time of... Uh, hopefully positive uh, involvement. And uh, yeah, we can, I'm not answering this very well. So maybe I should answer a question about something I know about. Right here from the Hi, lady I'm lady Melanie in the from row. Promiflash. And um, like we already said, everybody enjoyed the movie and you enjoyed filming it. So of course there's the question, is there going to be a third chapter? Um, yeah, that would really depends on the audience. Uh, hopefully, you know, we made this this film, this meal with love, and uh, hopefully people will enjoy it. But it's really up to the audience. I'd love to do it. Chad, I would like to pick up on the subject uh, of hiding stuff. Um, let's talk about the mirror sequence because that is probably the hardest bit for a filmmaker to hide yourself yeah, no, and it, the, um, the camera. And we we wanted to do a sequence like that for quite some time. Um, it comes down to like our, our background in action design. Sometimes bigger is better. Sometimes being sneaky and being creative adds a lot. And it's also, if you look, look back in the movie, we deal a lot with reflections and duality and the sides of John and John Wick. So what better to deal with reflections and <coughs> mirrors? It's uh, Keanu and I are both fans of Enter the Dragon. We figured, well, we get, we're gonna do it. We get a chance to do. We might not get another chance to do an action movie, so we should pay tribute to one of our favorite action films of all time. Um, between myself, Dan Lauston, our cinematographer, and our production designer Kevin Cavanaugh, we sat down and decided, okay, how are we gonna do this better? So we added in the video, we added in the colors, we added in the lights, the different kind of funhouse effect that we did, and kind of made it all about being an art exhibit, which we found really fascinating. And then uh, for about three months, we had all these rehearsal mirrors that we had up in our, our rehearsal hall. And between us and the, and the stunt team, just kind of started holding mirrors in, in 20 different ways to see how we could capture the reflections and make it interesting. Um, rather than just kung fu, we decided we'll do a gunfight in a mirror room. And we thought that was really fun. I think we pretty much used every trick we could practically to hide the crew, to hide Keanu, to hide the stunt guys. And what we couldn't do, we used a, a little bit of visual effects to help hide what we absolutely had to see. But it was, uh, it was very, very fun, very, very uh, tricky, but I think very, very satisfying. We really liked the way that came out. So hope yeah, you it seemed like it. all of the technicians who were involved on the floor yeah, really, just really enjoyed it and kind of were like, we're doing this? No. Yeah, it was a little, it wasn't welcome with open arms in the beginning. It took a lot of people uh, a little while to get on board with what we wanted to do. No one likes to shoot in a room full of mirrors. So that was fun. Very fun. Thank you. Time for three more questions. Lady over there. Um, yeah. So you are, are um, I'm Suzanne Gietl from uh, BZ. Uh, nice to meet you. Hi. Um, yeah, so uh, you are like um, an action movie star. You do a lot of uh, action uh, scenes by yourselves. Um, actually, you are single, I think. Um, so what, what effect uh, does it have uh, for, for, for the women um, that, that you do all these action scenes or do you do this for, 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 for the women? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, sometimes there's some other mirror scenes involved. <laughs> um, no. Um, I have no idea how to answer that question. Um, except, except, uh, uh, what? Except, uh, uh, you know, when it's nice and good, it's good. You know, it's nice. Uh, I don't, I, some of my friends, some of my girlfriends really like John Wick, which is, uh, really fun. You know, um, they're just like, yeah, we like John Wick. And, you know, it's, it's just, uh. So whenever you hear enthusiasm for something that you do, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. Question from the gentleman right here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should separate it? <laughs> I should, what should I do? I should like, so a guy walks into the bar. He's like, hey, I play John Wick. We only do action movies for the women, <laughs> that's it. And then just like, yeah, what don't we do for the women? Jack Keanu, Hello, Mr. from Reeves. the gentleman right here. Uh, you're a longtime motorcycle enthusiast, and I believe you bought your first motorcycle in Munich when you were working on that film in uh, Ferraria Studios. And you've also developed an incredible bike in California. Oh, Would you like to be able to uh, use that bike one day in the film that you might develop or have a character who rides a motorcycle? Uh, I don't know. I mean, if it was organic, I would. Um, actually, in, I didn't buy a motorcycle in, uh, in Munich. Actually, a, a young lady taught me how to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. I don't know who that, I don't remember that person's name. If you're out there, find me. Thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, if it was organic, if there was like a nice fit, like that, that motorcycle could fit in this film, I guess, I guess so. I mean, I, I'm not actively trying to do something like that, um, but I'm glad you like the motorcycle. And do you still ride all out on Sunset Boulevard late at night in LA? Yeah, I do actually, yeah. I kind of live down the hill, or um, up the hill from Sunset. And then yeah, Sunset, PCH, Santa Monica Mountains, yeah. Probably not as fast as I used to, but uh, certainly um, still riding. Last question from oh, the lady over there. I'm still Raquel Crawford from TV Berlin. Um, there must be a part three. We have to know where John will go, which hotel he will choose, and what's the dog's name. Yeah. All good questions. <laughs> and that was just one question. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a question with subsets. I think it was a demand for number three. Oh, that was a demand. <laughs> that was a demand yes. for number three. We're working Thank on you. number really three. I really appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank All you, right. Chat, and thank you, Keanu, for coming out to Berlin. Thank you very much. Thank you very All much. the very best with John Wick, Chapter 2, and have a wonderful time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Vielen Dank, meine Damen und Herren. Schönen Tag. Danke Ihnen. Thank you.